Hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sam and today I am sharing my 2021 reading goals. So every year I set myself a goal on Goodreads with a target of a number of books that I would like to read that year and it became a little bit of a running joke when I first joined Goodreads that I could never reach my reading goal, like at all. <laughs> Since I joined Goodreads in 2015 I think I've only actually reached my goal twice. The first time was in 2019 and then again last year in 2020. This might sound a little bit weird but I'm actually hoping that this year I don't reach my Goodreads goal because I've hoping that the world will start to go back to a little bit of normality at some point this year and so I won't be spending as much time at home with nothing else to do but read. So my general reading goal for this year is that I want to read 60 books and that works out at about eight books a month which last year I was averaging 10 books a month and so I feel like 60 is a good number for me to aim at and that it's high enough that I'll be pushing myself but that I'll not be pushing myself so hard that I'll risk burning out or that I'll be pressuring myself to read more than I actually feel comfortable. So that's my general reading goal but I also have a few more specific reading goals that I want to try and work on throughout the year. My first goal is to listen to at least one audiobook per month because last year I think in total over 12 months I listened to 10 audiobooks so it wasn't quite one per month but I did really start getting into audiobooks last year and I especially love listening to non-fiction as an audiobook because I I think that it sounds more like a podcast if that makes sense. However I do want to try a bigger range of genres as audiobooks because I've listened to a couple of fantasy books and I've also listened to one thriller and really enjoyed that and so if you do have any recommendations for thrillers or fantasy books that work really well as audiobooks then please let me know in the comments because I have a few ideas of books that I would like to try as audiobooks but I never really know how to start because I think it really depends on the narrator. I found that if I don't get along with the narration then I just switch off no matter what I'm doing and it doesn't keep me engaged. If you're in the UK and you're looking to get into audiobooks then I would really recommend checking if your library can give you access to BorrowBox which is a free app where you can get access to a whole library of ebooks and audiobooks. That's how I tend to listen to audiobooks now because it's free and I'm a cheapskate and the selection isn't amazing but they do have a few newer titles and sometimes especially on the newer titles you have to wait a few months before they become available and you can only borrow them for up to three weeks so if you're just looking to get into audiobooks but you're not sure whether it's something that you would enjoy then I would definitely recommend checking that out because it's free. <laughs> My next goal is that I want to read at least six possibly even more historical fiction books because because it's a genre that I don't tend to reach for but when I actually read historical fiction books I do tend to enjoy them and I actually can't remember the last time I rated a historical fiction book less than four stars but that might be because I tend to read the more popular titles and so actually if you do have any recommendations for lesser known historical fiction books especially ones that have maybe a mystery element or that are kind of thriller-ish then let me know in the comments and I'll definitely try and check them out. Another goal that I really want to work on this year is to take a more active approach in making sure that I'm reading diversely. It was something that I was aware of last year and that I was trying to incorporate within my reading and when I was picking books. However, I didn't actually track whether I was being successful, which was stupid. As part of that I also want to read more translated fiction and I also want to read more books that aren't set in the UK or the US because I do think that apart from fantasy books most of the contemporary fiction or the literary fiction books that I read are set in the UK or the US and I want to make sure that I am actually tracking this and that I'm not just saying that this is something that I want to do and then not actually doing it. Next I want to talk about book buying because I don't actually buy that many physical books because I just don't have the space to store them. However I do love a 99p Kindle deal and so my goal this year is to try and reduce the number of Kindle books that I'm buying. I might try and do something where I can only buy one Kindle book for every two Kindle books that I've read or I could just stop buying Kindle books altogether because I can't currently have over a hundred unread books on my Kindle which is ridiculous and 
I don't need any more, like I don't. The only exception to this rule is when it comes to new releases because I have found that when books are first released they tend to be around six, seven, eight pound on Kindle and I personally don't like spending that much on a Kindle book and so if I do see that they're more around the three pound mark or less then I will buy them there and then, especially if it's a book that I know I want to get around to reading soon. So next I want to talk about the way that I rate and review books because I have been feeling for the past few months, and especially since I started my booktube channel, that I'm not always consistent in the way that I rate books. I feel like when I review books and when I speak about books on my channel, I try and be balanced and I'll say what I liked about a book and what I didn't like about a book. And I hope that that gives people a good idea of whether it's a book that they would like to read. I'm not sure if this is going to make sense, but I feel like when I give a book a four star or a five star rating, people know that that means that I probably loved that book and that I did really enjoy it. And the same with when I give a book a one or a two star rating, people know that that probably means that I didn't love that book so much. However, when it comes to three star ratings, I feel like people interpret those in different ways because some people might see a three star review and think that is kind of like a average rating and that translates in their mind as like a five out of ten but in my mind sometimes I'll give a book a three star rating and that will translate to more like a seven out of ten so this year I'm planning to use something called Corepile to rate every single fiction book that I'm reading this is a rating system that was created by G from Book Roast and I'll leave a link to her channel down below in case you wanted to find out more but it's essentially a spreadsheet where for each book that you read you give it a rating out of 10 for things like plot and atmosphere and characters and the spreadsheet calculates a star rating for you and so I'm really hoping that that will help me to be a little bit more consistent with the way that I rate books. Finally I wanted to talk about some of my goals for booktube in general and I don't actually have any specific goals especially when it comes to subscribers because when I first started my channel I didn't know whether it was going to be something that I'd want to keep up and that I was actually going to enjoy and so my only goal when I first started was that I wanted to reach 100 subscribers because when you get to 100 subscribers on YouTube it means that you can create a custom URL for your channel so I really wanted to be youtube.com forward slash Griff Reads and that was it. That was kind of the extent of my ambition. I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain this well but I also don't think that subscriber numbers necessarily indicate how successful a YouTube channel is and I also know from my own statistics like my own YouTube analytics that most of the people that watch my videos videos aren't actually subscribed. I think on one of my videos recently something like 90% of the people that watched that video weren't actually subscribed. I think on average it's kind of around like 60% unsubscribed and 40% are actual subscribers and so I feel like as long as I'm enjoying the content that I'm creating and as long as people seem to be enjoying it and seem to be viewing my content then I don't want to put pressure on myself to reach a certain subscriber number when actually I feel like if I relax and just focus on making content that I enjoy then that to me means that I'm being successful. I hope that makes sense. I do however want to make sure that I'm not getting stuck in a rut with the content that I'm creating and so I do want to try and push myself outside of my comfort zone and for a while I was thinking about doing weekly reading vlogs because there are some booktubers that I specifically follow because they do weekly reading vlogs and I really enjoy watching those. However I don't feel like my life is interesting enough for me to get enough content to go into a weekly vlog and so I was thinking maybe I could do like 24 hour reading vlogs or weekend reading vlogs or maybe just stick to doing themed reading vlogs so vlogs where I read books within a specific genre and then I'm not limited to finish them within a specific time frame but I don't know I think I need to test different styles over the next few months and see what I'm most comfortable with and what I enjoy filming the most but yeah I think that brings me to the end of the video so thanks for watching if you've made it this far let me know in the comments what your reading goals are for this year and yeah if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!